I think we're live. Making sure that everybody is uh, making sure that everybody is in, and we're ready to rock and roll. So, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Rob Romanowski. I am the uh, director of sales operations with 3HTI, and welcome to today's webinar where we're going to be talking about custom materials for 3D printing. Um, I'm very excited about this. I was recently on a call with um, that was led by the the uh, president of Envision Tech, Al Sablani. And I've always been impressed with Envision Tech printers uh, since we became a reseller for Envision Tech uh, about four years ago. Um, just there's there's a there's a tremendous amount of reliability within these printers, um, high level of accuracy within their prints. I mean, we have customers that make small connectors um, that are using these printers. So they need that high level of detail, and plus these printers are reliable. But what we want to talk about today and the trend that I'm seeing in 3D printing of what's really important to people is materials. Uh, because, because a lot of different manufacturing companies have the need to have unique and specific materials, and that's where Envision Tech comes in. So a lot of people are looking for open source printers. There's really very few open source printers on the market that, that are really good. Um, or have a high level of detail in their prints. And with the Vision Tech, you can get the best of both worlds, and I'm not going to get too much into it. I'm going to let uh, my my guests today, or actually the guys who are leading the webinar, we have uh, Ruben. Uh, how do you say your last name again, Ruben? It's, it's Nigaglioni. Nigaglioni. I'm sorry about that. And how many, and no. I know we've, uh, I spent some time with Ruben. We went to a Tigers game last year. Uh, baseball-wise, uh, Detroit. So I apologize for that, Ruben. Um, mm -hmm. He is the channel sales manager in the Northeast, and we're also um, joined by Matt Mosier. And I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, Matt is the service applications and materials manager for Envision Tech. So I'm glad to have both you guys on. And uh, without further ado, Ruben, take it away. Share your screen. and uh, There you go. Can you see my screen right now? Yet. Not yet. Not yet. One moment and share screen. There we go. How about now? No, sir. No dice. Not seeing. No dice. We, right, we practice this. The good yeah, thing about this for for the audience is that you know you know this isn't a cooking show. You know sometimes people do demos or whatever, and there we go. All of a okay. sudden, like no. if, like with CAD demos, things magically appear. It's like everything that we do at Three HTI is live. So. All right. Now, now you got me, right? Yep. There we go. All right. Well, well, thanks everybody. I appreciate the, uh, the introduction. I appreciate your efforts, Rob and the team at three HTI for putting this together as Rob uh, alluded to, um, uh, we are a company who is focused obviously on delivering, uh, next generation hardware, which can push the limits of what 3d printing can accomplish, but the most important part uh, behind uh, any any additive process is what your materials can accomplish. So we're going to go into what we've developed with our materials, what some of our strategic partnerships have developed with our materials, what they are commonly being used for, what people are asking for, and where we uh, will be able to fill and meet uh, gaps in the future in the output of additive manufacturing. So. Uh, I'm gonna to get to the meat of the presentation very, very shortly, but I just want to give a quick introduction to Envision Tech. We uh, created DLP 3D printing back in 2002. So we were the originators of it and we are the uh, continued innovators of additive manufacturing in the DLP space. Uh, we also have other offerings as well, but that is what we're most well known for. We have 149 granted and pending patents. So we, again, are an innovator. Uh, we believe that uh, manufacturing in the additive space needs to be fast, uh, cost efficient, personalized, uh, super high quality, and it needs to fit all business models, whether large or small. Uh, when does Al Sablani sleep, Ruben? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I think he did that last year, uh, 2020. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you, you got to stay on top of the ball over in 2020. To, and to find, uh, you know, we're all working in a very challenging space and we are working around the clock 
to continue to uh, innovate. Uh, but the markets that we're really well known for, uh, bioprinting, uh, dental market, medical device market, uh, jewelry, entertainment, education, uh, uh, aerospace and automotive. Uh, we we uh, just any manufacturing is is very interested in prototyping and production vo uh, uh, volume. And uh, we actually have a sand casting printer as well to work with foundries. Now, these are some of the customers that we've worked with uh, in medical industrial and professional from bioprinting to education to dental and toys. So we have, we span quite the gamut of um, applications in the additive manufacturing space. For most who are listening, this is not going to be new information in terms of uh, DLP uh, resin based models have always been really well known to meet prototyping needs. The short uh, coming per se uh, in the past has been, can you give me engineering grade manufacturing level parts that can really meet uh, whether they're high temperature needs or uh, uh, high strength needs. That has usually been uh, associated with other sort of additive manufacturing methods uh, like FDM per se. Uh, what we are looking to do is create the perfect marriage uh, and, and this is what Additive has been striving for for the longest time, is making a marriage between super fast, high resolution, high accuracy parts and marrying it to the ability to have engineering grade characteristics, whether, uh, again, it, it's for uh, uh, heat, heat sensitivity, deflection, elongation of break, having those qualities. And that's where we're excited to really uh, tell you about the new materials that we are coming out with and the applications they are being used for. So that being said, let's uh, dive into it a, a little quickly. Uh, again, our applications manager, Matt Moser, is here with us. He has nine years of experience, and he'll be able to lend insight into some of these applications because he works with them on a daily basis. He sees what people are asking, and he sees the need that we need to meet. When we can't meet a need, we certainly go to the drawing board and we work on developing something that will meet the need. So this is a presentation of a lot of our high use materials here. The ones with the star next to them are brand new material and we're gonna dive into some of those uh, materials right now. We have a chemistry department in Montreal, Canada, which is constantly innovating and moving towards uh, higher use uh, materials in the industrial space. We're again, we're really well known in the dental space uh, and we're really well known in jewelry, but we're really also targeting uh, moving into an industrial capacity that hasn't been met before. So I'm gonna let Matt speak a little bit about some of the following materials and we will continue to move one at a time through each one. Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Matt, um, Matt Moser. I've been with Envision Tech for nine years, as Ruben had mentioned before. Um, uh, so I'm just gonna do a little short dive right into some of these materials and discuss them in a little bit further, but not get too gritty with the details. Uh, one of the new and exciting materials uh, for Envision Tech is our e-mold material. This was actually developed across the pond um, and validated over here in the, in the in North America and over in Europe um, for short production runs of injection molded tools uh, directly printed from um, the 3D printer from Envision Tech. Um, this material marries um, a good heat temperature deflection also with elongation at break. Um, so at, uh, we can do low pressure injection molding with various materials. Um, which makes this very exciting and um, it is being widely adapted over here in the US and also in Europe. Great. Uh, our next material, this is a material uh, from uh, what I, when I'm talking to clients because of its soft sh short value, it's silicone like uh, um, a material, it's a silicone like material, very soft. And uh, it's being used a lot in, in the industrial space for robotic grippers. Uh, that is something that I've been uh, working with a lot with some of my clients and Matt can actually expand a little bit more on what he's seen out of this material and why he um, 
uh, has probably excited to work with it. Absolutely, Ruben. You you are absolutely correct. We're seeing a lot of the the, the robotic sector actually taking part in adapting this material. Um, this is a a really cool silicone based material, um, and unlike some of the others in our in the additive space that are using hard to use two part resins with a very long bake time and a very specific process that you have to follow to the T in order to get the exact results. This is an actual one part resin with a very long shelf life, very easy to use resin, and it has a great shore strength at um, an A40. So the durometer is very, very soft, very, very flexible. It's um, one of the softest thermometer materials that we offer currently, and it's extremely easy to post-process and use and handle. That's what makes this very, very exciting and making it widely adaptive um, into these industries. Great. And here's a little video we have on this material. Did you enable the audio? I don't think the audio is going to be able to come through on the video. Um, oh, the audio can't come through. I don't, I don't. I don't think so. I don't. And I'm not the. I don't normally show video. Okay. But I think what what I really like about the video is you can see the flexibility of the uh, see the flexibility of the material. Yeah. Well, and I, if you want to kind of narrate a little bit as we're going through it, then uh, if since I'm not able to share that audio right now, feel free to do so. Uh, we only have a couple other ones, but uh, we have, let's move on to another silicone-like material with a harder shore uh, value. And I'll let Matt take it away on some of the, uh, the highlight points over here. Uh, yes, the EUA90 is another great um, material that is derived from that same silicone base um, as the EUA40. Um, this also is a one-part resin, very easy to use. It does have a shorter shelf life. However, um, it is still very, very easy to use. It prints very, very well um, with very little to uh, no post-processing. Um, it has a short strength of A90. Um, as you can see, that part that's actually in there, I actually physically did print. Um, and it is a lattice structure that has a one millimeter wall. Um, or thickness all the way around. It's very, very flexible, even at the shore 90, um, shore A90 strength. Um, again, I, I really like playing with this material. I've been working, I've been with Envision Tech for nine years, and for the longest time we were working with, you know, harder resins or wax filled resins, uh, but we could never really get into softer durometer materials until um, we really uh, put forth an effort towards our CDLM technology, which opened up the doors um, to these softer materials. And we really just, instead of opening up that door, we just kind of kicked it down um, and just came in full force. And there's a lot of things in the pipeline that are really, really exciting. And this is just one of them. Yeah, and, and this material, um, it, you can see demonstrations of it where you can try to pretty put a good amount of force on pulling it apart and it has an incredible uh, ability to rebound to its original shape. I think you're going uh, you to see can... my hands. You might see my well, hands. Well, unfortunately, unfortunately, this video is not, wasn't, uh, was stuck and it wasn't able to log oh. into the call. So I wanted to describe uh, what you're capable of doing. If anybody is interested in seeing these videos with the audio, you can uh, go to our Facebook page or you can even go, I believe you can find them on the website as well. Um, we do have lots of videos uh, there showing off some of these materials. Correct. So in addition to uh, our own material science department, again, uh, located in Montreal, we do have some strategic partnerships where it, this is where we kind of really come up with uh, additional customizable material. Um, when I say that we have material partnerships, those are certainly selectively open partnerships that we have. Uh, we work with partner with um, uh, companies like Henkel Loctite 
And we are looking for when we're looking for people who can address gaps in our portfolio. Uh, so we're looking at companies that are reliable, that have standards of quality control, manufacturing, and again, they have disruptive materials that meet uh, a need our customer base requires that we don't quite fill in some instances. So I'd like to go through a couple of new materials that have come out in, in this sector and we will plow through this presentation. So the first would be uh, our uh, A70 high rebound material. Um, and I'm gonna let Matt speak a little bit more. This is gonna be uh, uh, more in his expertise, but again, we're gonna deal with another uh, soft, uh, soft gel-like material uh, that can be used for myriad applications. Yeah, so, so the EIND 402 is a material that was developed by Hankel Loctite. And when we first got the material and started working with it, it was one of the easiest materials that I've had the, the ability to work with to develop and to uh, you know, develop the, the overall process for that it's, it's a churn key. Again, this is a very exciting material um, when it comes into it. It has a short strength of A70. Um, it's a one part resin, very easy post processing and cleanup. Um, it's a pretty much uh, point and shoot material. Um, you can see those are my hands in there in that image. I'm actually holding a, a custom um, uh, protective, uh, protective mask um, that's custom fit to somebody's face um, off of the Envision 1 CDLM and I can't speak highly enough about that material. That's one of my favorite materials so far. Okay, well, thank you for that, Matt. Um, and the next material I want to move on to is our 3955 FST material. When earlier in the presentation, when I was talking about like marrying just resolution with engineering grade, uh, a material performance. This is the one that almost always stands out to me. This is, we, we come a lot of applications where people are looking for an Ultum-like material. And I would say that this is our best uh, step forward in addressing those sorts of needs. Matt, I'll let you take it away a little further. Yeah, Ruben, I, I have to agree. This is a very unique and and, and great material from Hankel, and it meets uh, some very specific requirements. And the, the the majority of the reason that this was developed was for our aerospace uh, uh, vertical. And and the reason being is the material needs to be completely flame uh, flame retardant, um, and it has to meet that that UL ninety four VO uh, specifics uh, for to be adapted into the aerospace. So this has opened up the doors um, into that area. However, this material does require the use of the Envision 1 HT printer and only that printer currently, as that printer does have a heated chamber and material uh, build platform. And this material does need to be printed at um, above 60C, I believe. Um, Outside of that, it, it's it's very easy to work with. Um, it just needs some printing um, printing atmosphere requirements in order to print so. Yeah, and I'm going to move over to the video. I know that the volume is right, not there, but I want to show um, the material being uh, used and placed into a heated uh, kind of like a steamy like bath so that you guys can see uh, how it responds because it's a very nice visual. So bear with me as I forward to that and here we go. I'm going to move this forward just a little bit. Yeah, so since we don't have any audio, I will give you guys some information. This material at room, temp room temperature is completely solid. Um, and it only becomes a liquid above 60 C. This is actually cool. I haven't seen this video yet, Ruben, and I did print that crayfish. Um, that, that crayfish was printed in multiple pieces and put together, um, and it was put into the boiling water, and it did not move. That's pretty cool. 
All right, our next material is the uh, HDT 230 high heap. Uh, again, we're addressing high, uh, engineering grade performance uh, out of these materials, which I, uh, I can't re I can't iterate this enough. It is the the biggest gap between where we have been resolution was always performance and we continue to work with strategic partnerships to, to develop a new material and I'll let Matt emphasize or describe the differences per, perhaps between this and the last material and why somebody might prefer something of this nature. Yeah, so the EIND 147 is a, is a material that does not require the use of the Envision 1HT. However, it still does have a heat temperature deflection of 230C. Um, and uh, what's exciting about the material is it, it does have the ability to um, resist that amount of heat and also have a, a good elongation at break. Um, it's not great, however, this is always the, um, the problem whenever you have a heat temperature deflection that's very, very high, it's typically not going to have a good fluctual modulus um, as you have to trade off one for the other. It can be very flexible and it's not gonna resist heat or it can resist heat and it's not gonna be very flexible. Um, this does have a, a, a pretty good one, which is at about 3.2%. Um, so this works really good for under the hood applications um, or where they're going to be high temperature um, areas. We're seeing a lot of this being used for electrical connectors under the hood and automotive. Um, and we even uh, for short, um, short run injection molding as well. This also has been used. Thank you, Matt. Um, our next uh, material is the E3840. Uh, uh, it's one of our higher resolution materials, um, uh, very low shrinkage, um, and of course, exceptional surface finish. Uh, what are some of Matt, what are some of the uh, primary applications that you're seeing or the request for this part? Uh, what, what is the demand for it? So where you're going to see this one uh, really uh, taking hold is your general engineering, um, just your general overall prototyping material. This is a a good solid all around. It doesn't do the best at anything. It doesn't do the worst at anything. You know, it's 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 right there in the center. Um, that's where it likes to be. And, you know, it works really, really well. It's easy to play with. Um, it has great surface finish, very low shrinking. So when you're, when you're prototyping something or you're working on something really quick, the last thing that you want is an inaccurate model. Um, you want a true to representation. This material really fits that bill. This next material is our 3843. What we typically, when I hear uh, somebody request, uh, I need an ABS-like part, or you know, a traditional thermoplastic ABS, or even a nylon 12-like part. This is something that Hank Loctite has brought to us, uh, has been validated for our printers, and is a great all-purpose prototyping part. Uh, after Matt gives a couple of tidbits on this, we're actually going to show a video uh, that shows the incredible durability of it in a real-world scenario. So uh, it'll be a, a fun video for you all to see. Yeah, again, just like the IND 147, um, well, not the IND 147, the, the, the very last material that we were working with, the 3840, this is um, a, a nice material that, you know, is it a good for general prototyping, but when we need some durability, if we're going to do uh, machining or we're going to be tapping out, you know, threads or uh, doing any kind of additional work to it, that's where this material really does excel. And this video, I have watched this video, it's a really good video. Um, and you'll see the, the durability of this material. So what, what they did with the material here, because I saw this yesterday, they made the uh, skateboard wheels yep. out of the material which is pretty cool.
The only thing I ask, Ruben, is play it all the way to the very, very, very end. <laughs> it's so, kind of uh, tough I, I get... Go ahead, Rob. It's kind of tough to get a smooth. It's kind of tough to get a smooth video, but basically, you know, he rides it in the skateboard park, and actually, he's. I think he rode it for a couple of hours, um, but they want to shoot the entire video. It's like anything else when you shoot a short video that's like maybe a thirty seconds or a minute long. It takes a couple hours to shoot, so the the wheels, you know, worked worked extremely well. Yeah, absolutely. And they really did. Shows shows just it, and he was doing tricks on it, like he was doing jumps and everything. But at the end, like like you said, Matt, to play it to the end, he 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 skates off and he goes up and he and he does this drop in, but he bites. <laughs> yeah, he bit <laughs> it. Falls it. Off yeah, the board. it's fun. I'm glad that they caught that and put that in the video. And did you want to address the uh, the one question that's on the screen right now? I don't see. The hey question. guys, I got a I, I got a uh, we we have a question. Um, it just came in asking to clarify how flexural strain affects a part's performance. Um, the flexural strain at, at the break, you know, it really does kind of go into the, the, you know, it's a combination of the, the flexural strain and the elongation um, at the failure. Um, now, how these, these come into to, to play, I, I am not... Um, an expert at there, I could not necessarily answer that correctly, um, but we can we can answer that maybe away from the the webinar. Yeah, I think it's going to be very situationally based on what the um, uh, the part is used for. So not to to give a cop out answer, but everything is unique to a person's industry and the intention of the part itself. All right. Let's move on to our next material. Uh, this material right here, the E3172. Uh, when I come across uh, uh, somebody who's looking for a polypropylene-like material, this is uh, really what we're using for to, to fit um, that application. Um, and it, it, it did address a gap in our portfolio. And again, that's what our strategic partnerships are for. I'll let Matt talk a little bit more of how he has um, seen this develop for our customer base. Yeah, so where we're seeing this really, really take off is uh, like you see the part over here. This was for a potential customer and it was, um, you know, it's a dust cover. It goes right over um, where there's going to be fan. Uh, there's a fan and there's a lots of debris where there's going to be impacted by um, different pieces and, and very, but that's where this material excels um, with the, the strength of the material. Uh, that's basically where we're seeing it take off is just, you know, for dust covers and um, general prototyping overall. Yep. And uh, when it comes into, you know, snap fits, this one does do really well as well. Yep. And, and tooling applications in a, in a warehouse manufacturing type setting are, is also a great application for this. Moving on. I believe this might be our last new material that we are, uh, are, uh, emphasizing today, it's the EIND 406. Uh, this is actually taking off in the automotive industry, uh, quite great. And 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 Matt being in in Dearborn, Michigan, right, you know, next to Detroit, in the heart of uh, the automotive empire uh, that was that is uh, Michigan. I will let him uh, talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. This one, um, this one, we has just been recently validated. We, we got the, the chance to, to, to validate it uh, through the month of November. And um, in doing so, this material has some very unique characteristics to where, um, if you rem earlier in this webinar, I had mentioned that the, the marriage of heat temperature deflection and elongation at break, they, you have to trade off one for the other. And this is almost the, the best of both. The, I, I think you're going to get, um, in here we have a heat temperature deflection of 108 C and we have an elongation at break of almost 25%. It's close between 24 and 
Um, this material is going, it has been widely used um, and adapted into the automotive, as Ruben had mentioned, um, for those under the hood applications. Uh, typically in the past, we've had higher temperature deflection materials, but they have a very low elongation. What that means as far as the, the parts is they're, they're brittle. Um, when, they, when they go underneath the hood, if they, you know, if there's too much flex or stress on them, they have a higher tendency of cracking or breaking. Yep. Um, that's where you need that elongation at break. That's where this material really does excel um, as far as, you know, um, you know, low temperature tubing um, that can be used or, or clamps or, and even electrical cl um, clips that are going to be closer to the engine. Um, that's where these have been being used. Yeah. And to go back to go back to the question previously, so in the automotive industry, uh, having a brittle part under the hood, uh, you know, we're talking about flexural strength and, and and so forth, and how it impacts a part. Well, in that industry, it's critical. Uh, we need something that uh, has a high heat uh, deflection, but also something that has a high elongation. So for that industry specific, and again, it is industry specific. It is part specific, uh, but we try to address. Um, all applications that may be out there. There's no sort of, sort of one-stop shop material, but we certainly believe that we have the capacity to address most, if not all needs uh, out there. And where we do feel like we're coming up short, we develop. Uh, what is different than us for, for us than other companies, the big uh, other additive manufacturing companies out there is they develop all their materials in house and they wanna keep all that revenue there. And that's not a bad business model. We uh, are oriented towards solving problems and sometimes problems can't be solved on an island. Uh, again, I, I can't emphasize this enough. Strategic partnerships, our own team in Montreal, uh, developing material sciences, and in many instances, working with um, uh, bright minds across the world who are not, aren't, aren't necessarily uh, employed by Envision Tech, but listening to them and developing new materials accordingly. So I want to emphasize that that is a difference between us and uh, some of the other big boys out there who just develop everything in-house in and maybe can't have as much of a reach into other people's industries as we can. Uh, I want to emphasize just a couple of uh, new developments on the hardware side as well. Um, we have a couple of new printers that have come out that are new uh, to the Envision Tech lineup released within the last couple of months or um, being ready to ship uh, within the next couple of weeks. The first is our D4K printer, which is a, a professional desktop DLP printer with a 4K projector. What is impressive about this is that it has double the resolution of any desktop DLP printer out there. Um, it is, uh, I believe, a game changer for innovation, uh, whether it's in the jewelry, dental, or industrial sector. Um, I believe that people can rapidly prototype amazing detail and results out of this printer. And it has a projector that is designed for up to 20,000 hours of use. Here are some of the uh, specs on it. It is uh, 5.8 inches by 3.3 by 4.3. So definitely, I would say the highest end desktop uh, resolution printer that is on the market currently. And our next new offering is a really exciting one. It's our Extreme DLP, uh, professional DLP printer. It is uh, gigantic uh, by DLP standards. Um, the measurements are 16 inches by 17 inches by 16 inches. Most people in the Z direction, when they come talking about high resolution 3D printers are often reg regulated in the Z height uh, toward to less than 10 inches. So this is uh, just a product that can produce massive high resolution parts at incredible speeds. And I will, I will piggyback off of that real quick. And just we, this hasn't hit the market yet, but in our initial testing, it is extremely fast. Mm -hmm. And there are so some of the size right there. And what I would like to do, um, I, I know we're getting close to our limit here. We've gone through materials, uh, what we do, what our partners do, uh, trying to lay the foundation for 
what many people may be looking for. Uh, if there's any outstanding questions out there, uh, feel free to send them to us. Otherwise, um, uh, you know, uh, I hope this has been beneficial to all participants and we would love to hear from you, whether it's now or an email uh, version. Uh, you can reach out to Rob. Uh, and Rob is one of our, our, our great partners um, in the Northeast and he has done a fantastic job through, for us at 3HTI. Well, thank you, Ruben. I appreciate you saying that. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, it's real easy. All you have to do is respond to the, uh, to the email invitation that was sent to you, and that will come directly to me. Um, I, I, I think these, these printers are tremendous. I mean, we have customers that we've, um, that we've helped recently, like Facebook, um, Arizona State University, um, just I would say within the past like past few weeks with uh, those two entities. Um, and it's not like, hey, here's the printer, good luck, have fun. We, you know, what, one of the things that's great about a Vision Tech is working with the customers to get the printer to perform to how you need it to perform. Like Ruben said earlier, they're interested in solving problems, they're not interested in selling printers. And most 3D printing companies, they sell you a printer and then you're on your own. But with the Vision Tech, because these are high precision, high precision machines that can create and use parts, there's, there's time and effort that go into getting the machine to work exactly how you need it to work. Yeah. And that's going to get your learning curve. It's going to get you ahead of the learning curve in using these machines and get you productive in a much faster manner. And the other thing I, I wanted to mention real quick with these materials, at one point, Ruben, I think um, I think it was last year at the conference, um, Envision Tech had, a, had 120 different materials listed on their website, and I think they yeah. scaled that back to, I think it was 50, because they didn't want to confuse people. Yeah. And because people can get confused by the materials, like, well, what type of printer is it? Like, what can I print with it? Well, you... And the, and the thing is, is like there are certain printers because within their line, like if you want to print more of a silicon um, material for, for an end-use part composed to something with a mold, um, there may be a different printer that, you, that might fit your needs better. But what it yeah. comes down to is they have a wide range of materials that will fit, and they'll work with you for custom materials. So this is not necessarily an open source printer where you can just get your own materials and resins and use them, but you could you can have a conversation or work with Envision Tech and with their vendors. They will come up with a custom yes. um, material for you. Yeah, and, and I'll be back on that real quickly. We big. we will work to calibrate a material that fits your needs on our equipment. Um, so that that is unique in the additive space for uh, I hate to say it this way, but for the big boys. Uh, you know, we're one of the big yeah. boys. We might not be as well known as other guys out there, but we, in terms of customization, I think we're light years ahead. And, and I will correct Rob on one thing. We're, we're certainly interested in, in selling printers, but the, the purpose of that is to change industry um, and not to leave you hanging. And it, it's not simply about revenue recognition and repeatability through material that only we develop and we make money off of. We want to solve problems. We want to change the space. Absolutely. So I think that's gonna conclude our webinar for today. So Matt and Ruben, thanks a lot guys. I appreciate you. Uh... Appreciate you leading this, and I think it was very informative. If you guys have any questions, like I said, respond to the email that uh, I sent out to you guys, you, or you can email us at info at 3hti.com. Real easy to remember, info at 3hti.com. So we're going to be dismissed. Thanks again, everybody, and have a great weekend. Thank you, Rob. Thanks, everybody.